Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Peruvian-born New York City jazz singer and musician Corina Bartra. We caught up with her from her home in New York to discuss her life in jazz, COVID living, and her new 2022 CD called Amber Light, Luz Ambar. Today she is considered one of the most important jazz singers in Peru and is a pioneer in merging Afro-Peruvian rhythm with Creole music. She's been all over putting this music out there and she is very revered throughout Latin America. She is a pioneer, she has great stories, and she enjoys dispensing. Enjoy. Hey Joe Domino, Neon Jazz, how are you? Oh, good, good, good. Hope you're well good. too. <laughs> yeah, everything's good. Thanks for taking a minute out today. Oh, yeah, thanks for calling, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's get into Amber Light. And before we do, you know, we've been in this pandemic and it's really kind of crippled the live music scene. How how did you do over that two-year period? I had uh, some concerts in Peru and a couple of concerts here too. I recently performed at the Culture Lab in uh, Long Island City, New York, and also the Library of... Um, Langston Hughes. But yeah, you're right. Uh, the music uh, is has changed. The music scene has changed. And who knows if it's going to be a, once again what it was before the pandemics, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think things have probably been altered pretty much. Um, talk to me a little bit about Amber Light. How did this project come about? And, you know, having it come out now with the chance to perform live music more, how does it feel? Kind of like a new approach because I usually all my CDs with my vocals because I have another project which is instrumental which is um, a mini big band called Afro Peruvian New Trans Orchestra and we're going to be performing at the Shrine in August four but this uh, I I always use a piano player and a septet uh, sometimes included a guitar sometimes. Uh, not, but this time I did it without the piano. I did it with a guitarist uh, uh, from um, Brazil, um, Amorim, and then I did it with uh, drums, cajon, the percussion from Peru, and I included uh, occasionally the saxophone. So it was a different approach. Um, it was a great uh, during the pandemics to plan out for this project and record. I I, I really recorded during the pandemic, so <laughs> the musicians were very careful to come with their masks uh, to rehearse, and it was a challenge. But um, I included uh, some of my originals and also I did, uh, arrangements from traditional Creole or Afro Peruvian music. Yeah, uh, Sending the Clowns too, which is a jazz standard. Uh, I think it was composed by Victor Young, but I did uh, an arrangement uh, utilizing uh, Lando, which is an Afro-Peruvian uh, rhythm. So obviously, as we've established, you're, you're from Peru, and I'm curious, talk to me a little bit about your childhood and how not only music, but more specifically jazz became your passion. Well, it's because I had a grandfather, Arturo, that uh, he liked jazz and he liked to play cards and listen to, to jazz. That was his favorite uh, pastimes. He played music of Charlie Parker um, and uh, also um, uh, the Count Basie Orchestra. So I, I started really listening to him. I was also wanting to once come to the U.S. and study jazz with the with the masters. So uh, that's how I also start to, to realize that both uh, music, I mean, in terms of rhythms, come from the same source, which is Africa. So they could uh, be blended uh, smoothly. One day I realized my wish, and I came here <laughs> to New York, and I studied in some colleges. Uh, for example, also when I went to Queens College, I had an ensemble teacher, uh, Roland Hanna. I remember he was he was great. I started learning also recording with great uh, jazz musicians, top notch, 
jazz musicians. Like when I recorded my first uh, CD uh, with my vocal, it was a quartet. Uh, with Kirk Lightsey when um, on piano and uh, Santi Dubriano on bass and Clifford Barbaro who also once was the drummer of uh, Joe Hendrix and Betty Carter Clifford Barbaro and I also included uh, in a couple of pieces uh, a cajon player uh, Pucho Salas uh, who was living in New Jersey so I venture into doing a a CD which also included a couple of um, songs. Um, one, one, one of them I, I wrote, Yambambo, and the other also, I think it was Invitation, where I included also some uh, Afro-Peruvian rhythms. So did you always have a dream of coming to America, and more specifically New York? Yeah, I wanted to come to New York because it was like the center of... Uh, uh, of culture, let's let's say, and it was an exciting place that I I look at pictures and photos and yeah, I was always dreaming of coming in to New York. You know, <laughs> I thought it was a very exciting place to to be and study and learn. Uh, I think in New York City, you not only learn at schools, which um, uh, are I mean, great great jazz musicians teach at. Uh, these schools that I went to here, like Manus College of Music, and then they blended with a new school, um, and then I also went to Long Island University in Brooklyn campus, where I used to live in Brooklyn too, and then I I studied at Queens College, uh, and also working with great musicians. For example, in my city travelogue, um, I work with a great... Uh, drummer called Steve Barrios. He used to play with Apache, for Apache Man um, of uh, Jerry Gonzalez, the leader. And also I worked with a great uh, sax player in that um, city and unfortunately he passed away with uh, leukemia, uh, uh, Thomas uh, Chapin. So, uh, and also at the, at the piano was Eddie Martinez. And uh, for a while, he was uh, the pianist of Gato Barbieri. Uh, so I always included uh, on my recordings uh, great people I I, I can uh, benefit from and, and also have um, a very incredible sound. So what was the first live jazz show you saw when you got to New York that really blew you away? Uh, the first live show. Show I got that blew me away was seeing Sarah Vaughan uh, before she passed away, um, and uh, that was really moving uh, because I always loved. Uh, I mean, all, all her recordings really, but particularly I love that CD title. How long has this, this been going on? So what was so moving is that she asked. Uh, the audience uh, what would they like to hear and I <laughs> raised my voice and said how long has this been going on <laughs> and she sang that song and, and tears were coming out of her eyes so it was really moving and I also went upstairs I sneaked uh, because I, I, you are not allowed you are not supposed to go upstairs because she was resting in a cushion in between the sets and I said, say hello to her. She said hello to me, and she asked me, I, I told her I, I also wanted to sing, and that I come from Peru, and, and then somebody told me that that was enough, that she was not feeling well. So I, they, they sent me downstairs again, you know. But the, that, that experience was amazing. I, I always uh, remember that. Talk to me a little bit about what you like the best about being a performer and being a musician, this process of being a professional. What is it that you look forward to the most? Well, what I like um, is the possibility that I had of uh, doing something adventurous, like uh, fusing uh, Afro-Peruvian and also Creole music uh, from Peru, which is also different than Afro-Peruvian and uh for example, it has um, 
another groove that I've been introducing. Um, and there is a groove also that I find that is more challenging for musicians, which is the marinera, which has a very laid back feel at the beginning, but then it turns fast. Uh, but that uh, groove, I find that is uh, more challenging to musicians. They they tune in more to the festejo, which is a fast uh, groove from the Afro-Peruvian um, uh, uh, music in Peru and the Lando. And that what I find exciting about exciting about being a musician was more the adventure, because I have different music projects, and in this in this, in in each of these these music projects, I explored a different aspect of myself as a musician. For example, I also have a project called Prisma, which I do more in Peru, which is because it has a, a keyboard, an electric guitarist, and a kenna player from the Peruvian Andes. But I also infuse it in some uh, tunes with Afro-Peruvian grooves. But uh, in each of these projects, I explore a uh, different aspect of myself as a performer and as a composer, or a songwriter, whatever you want to call it. So that's what I find more exciting, the challenge of exploring and and also getting myself into something that, um, you know, it's it's uh, not, not, it's underrepresented. Uh, really in the music here right and also in in the music of peru because peru is a very conservative country and people are very tied up to the traditional music more or the very commercial kind of music where they can just go and drink and dance you know (laughs) have some fun (laughs) yeah yeah so speaking of, if you do come to Kansas City and perform Amberlight, how would you pitch the show? How would you um, explain what a live show would be like to get people in Kansas City to come see you live? I would include a couple of more standards that that they know to um, classical jazz standards with uh, the rhythms of, from Peru. And I would uh, tell them that they, they're going to expand their music uh, boundaries and they're going to explore new territory in terms of music and that they're going to also journey to Peru and uh, they're going to have a great time, you know, <laughs> leaving their, their cozy known place or backgrounds. Uh, I would just um, introduce it like that and also I also sing some tunes in Portuguese too like uh, uh, last time I, I sang this uh, tune written by Chico Buarque Vai Passar also by Joe Deadato I perf- I sang um, uh, Ara um, which is titled in, in English would be the leap of a frog so I sing a couple of Brazilian <clears throat> songs which people here are more familiar with. So it's not all like something unknown to them that we're going to be venturing in, in a totally unknown uh, world, right? Like uh, this music that is not not widely um, promoted here, right? Or elsewhere, or in Europe. I mean, when I go to perform in Europe... Somehow, I think that people in Europe are more, um, um, they, they, lo- they, they all appreciate world music. While in the U.S., not everybody is, uh, you know, explores world music, as much as in Europe, for example. Why is the reason? <laughs> I don't know why, it's, but... It's been like that for quite a while, for sure. Karina, thank you for opening up about the new album, about your life and music. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything as we move forward. Oh, yeah. Thanks uh, thanks so much for inviting me to your great program. Thanks for listening and tuning into another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest singers and players in New York, Kansas City, Peru, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Karina for her time, music, and story. 
you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for all things Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And for all things Joe Domino, joedomino.com. And there you can donate via Patreon or PayPal. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.